guys, it's Jerrica. I am 14 weeks today, so this is my 14 week vlog. Um, really not a whole bunch going on this week. I feel so much better. I'm still nauseous at times. I'm still really tired at times, and I'll talk about my biggest complaint later, but it's manageable. Um, and I'm really starting to kind of fully enjoy my pregnancy, actually be able to enjoy being pregnant and you know I can feel my funness and I feel like I'm growing and I think I might have just started to feel little baby flutters, the little um, bubble popping feeling down where my uterus is growing. So maybe, maybe I'm just hoping that's not my digestion and <laughs> hoping it's baby, but I did feel Adele, I started feeling her movements at about 13 weeks, um, in my 13th week, and then it started to get more noticeable that, yes, that's what it was in my 14th and 15th week. So, um, it's definitely possible, but who knows? I don't know where my placenta is right now, so, um, I'm not sure. Uh, so I guess we'll just have to see. Um, one thing that is really cool this week that I wanted to share with you guys is, you know, everybody shares how, like, big the baby is. And, yeah, that's really cool, and that's, that's fun to think about how big your fetus is and how much it's grown just within these last few weeks. And, um, but my favorite thing is the placenta. I think the placenta is, like, the coolest thing in the entire world. And this week is when the placenta has taken over hormone function for your growing fetus. So instead of pulling the hormones from your um, ovaries, like before, and how you usually do for your cycles and things, um, it's, it's all done in your placenta now. Your placenta has basically taken over complete charge of growing your fetus and helping you grow your fetus. So I just think that's so cool. I am a placenta freak. It's just so fascinating to me. And later on, I'm sure I'll do not only updates in my weekly videos, but I'll probably do more videos on placenta encap encapsulation. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I had my midwife do it with Adele, and I absolutely loved it. It helped so much. I won't go into so much detail because, like I said, I'll do something different with it. But it's just the most amazing thing, and I've had the opportunity to help a local friend that does encapsulation, so um, it's something that I would love to do once I get into birth work, and it's something that I'm very passionate about and has helped me tremendously, so I would I'd love to pass it on to other people. Um, so I guess I'll just jump in with my notes that I have. If you haven't noticed, I got my hair cut. Thank the Lord. Oh, my hair was just driving me absolutely insane. It was getting dry, it was getting more curly, it was just so long and so annoying. And even, I mean, I still have a good amount of length here, and I cut off over five inches. It was so long and so annoying. It was so overdue that it, it was just driving me nuts. So I got mommy time on Sunday, and I went and got my hair cut by a friend who um, just got an awesome spot with an awesome salon, and I love her to death. And it was so nice to just... Are you right in the dino? <laughs> You're silly. <laughs> um, it was so nice to just sit there and this salon is just gorgeous and because she's considered new talent, it was a $15 cut and that was it. But I got like the massage and the conditioning treatment and the makeup touch up when I was done and it was just... You know, it was so nice to just sneak away and be pampered for a little while. It was so nice and so needed. And now I actually feel kind of motivated, especially now I'm feeling better, to actually do something with it. Like, okay, so I had a really rough night last night. So this is like, I straightened it yesterday and this is the way I went to my midwife appointment this morning because I was just like, after last night, it was just not, I wasn't going to do anything else. So going into last night, We've been having some really great nights with Adele. She's been sleeping really well, actually. And when I say that, yes, she's getting up a couple times at night to feed, but then she'll only feed for a little while and be able to go back to her bed. The only time we really have issues is at like six o'clock in the morning where she just wants to nurse and sleep for like 
the next hour, hour and a half, like she used to. But that has begun to really just, I don't really want to say hurt me, but it's just that skin crawling, aggravating effect. And I can't just lay down and do that because it's just like, I just go like stir crazy. I want to have like a toddler tantrum. It's just, it doesn't work. Um, uh-oh, can you get that for mommy? I was reading that. Oh no, let me get it. Hold on. She has something against these silly note cards I use. Um, so, she's been doing really well. It's been really nice, except for those mornings. Honey, I think you're okay. Where'd your cereal go? Oh no, where's your cereal? It's over there. Okay. Um, so she has been doing pretty well. Sorry. Um, but there are some nights where we call her her boob dependency nights, where it's just for some reason she refuses to unlatch, she refuses to lay down in her bed, and then when she comes in bed with us, it's not just so simple that she, you know she lays down with us and she's happy because she's in bed with us. It's like, it's like we just pulled out all of her teeth and she's just screaming bloody murder because I will not let her nurse longer than 20, 30 minutes because after that point, I'm so drained and I start getting angry because it's just aggravating. If anybody has nursed through pregnancy, they know it's, it's hard to explain. It's not pain. It's just... Oh, it's hormonal, it's like a mood swing, and it's just, it's downright awful. So, and nighttime is just especially worse. Um, so, last night, the night started off with me getting home from work, and Adele waking up like five minutes after I get in the door when I'm trying to like get my nighttime snack and get ready for bed. And so I had to nurse her and put her down, and then she was up within an hour, Laid her back down. She was up within 30 minutes. Finally just brought her into bed with us. After the battle of, um, Adele, honey, you're okay. You need to go play. Where's your cereal? You better go find it. Um, so after finally getting her in bed with us, and getting her calmed down after she was so angry that I wasn't letting her just nurse, um, she finally fell asleep in between Brendan and I and not like across my neck like she usually is or like on my shoulder but then like her arm like wrapped around my entire neck so I was happy. I lay down and I hear Tristan. And you know, Tristan gets up on his own quite a bit at night time, not a problem. Sometimes he comes in and you know, says, oh, I need a drink or oh, I, need, I just need a hug or I need tucked back in or I'm just using the potty, not a problem. He's usually just fine and I hear him and I acknowledge him and then that's that. Um, but last night, it was completely different. It was screaming, crying, upset. And he went through, thank you, sweetie. Mommy. Yeah. I want more ID. Oh, okay. Let's put this up here so we don't break it, okay? I'll get her more in a little while. Go finish your movie. But I'm almost done. I don't need to know what they do. Oh. Okay, well, I'll get more in a minute. Go play. So, Tristan started having night terrors at about 18 months old. And he went through cycles where he would have a really awful month of night cycle or night terrors almost nightly. One or two even sometimes. And then he would have like two months where he was completely fine and we we're like, oh, thank God, it's done. And then he would start it up again. So that went on for a good, almost, you know, what do you want that oh, man, for a while. I mean, he was probably, probably about like two and a half or so when it kind of subsided. It was a little bit after Adele was a newborn. Um, it was like we got out of that summer because she was born in July, and all of a sudden we're like, it's strange, we haven't had any night terrors with Tristan in a while, and it was just kind of something 
we had really started limiting gluten and we had already cut out a lot of processed foods and we've cut out sugar and overstimulation. So I mean, we did all that, but yeah. it was like, we weren't really seeing that much improvement or anything that really seemed to trigger it. But then all of a sudden it was like, oh, he must have grown out of it. And he hasn't had a night terror since then in over a year, over a whole year, almost a year and a half now because Adele's coming up on a year and a half. And it was so strange to see him in that night terror again. It was just awful. You know, if anybody's dealt with that, your heart just breaks and there's nothing you can do. They, you know, he's stuck in this like the worst dream that you can imagine. That's the only way to describe it. And he's thrashing. He doesn't know I'm there. He's asking for me. He's trying to, like, he's in the dream where he's like mumbling and talking in his dream, but I can't even understand what's going on. And so that started and I go in and I lay down with him and I talk to him and I sing with him and you know that's really the only thing that you can do is be there for them and so all of a sudden he like kind of comes to and then he starts falling back asleep and then he really comes to and he pees the bed he has not had a nighttime accident since just after his two year birthday we haven't had a nighttime accident in a year and a half. Over a year and a half. Almost two years. And it was like, I, it was just heartbreaking because he then woke up and felt so awful and didn't know what happened. And he was sweating from his night terror. And then he peed all over both of us in his bed. And it was just miserable. It was so sad to see him so upset and worked up. And, you know, so we got him cleaned up. Or I got him cleaned Brendan was snoring with Adele. The only time of the night that Adele was sleeping was when I was dealing with Tristan, which I guess is sort of a blessing. So I had to get him showered off and get his bed all stripped and remade up with new blankets and lay down with him again and get him calmed down. And so he finally went back to sleep and I went back to bed. And of course, I look at the clock and fall asleep and not even 20 minutes later I'm up nursing Adele again and then 30 minutes into that nursing session Tristan's having another night terror so Brennan tries to go in he just doesn't do well with night Brennan's not a night person at all he's not uh he doesn't do well with the night terrors because it just frustrates him that he can't do anything and Tristan's just stuck in this dream um so you know he tried he really did, but then he just brought Tristan in with me, and once Tristan got on me, he was a little better. You're okay. Here's your dino. Um, so, there I was with both kids on both shoulders, Adele trying to nurse, Tristan still kind of stuck in a night terror, and finally we went to sleep at like 4.30. <laughs> and before, I mean... I had maybe 15 minutes of sleep before that, so I, we were, I was up like until 4.30. And then, guess what, Adele wakes up at 6 o'clock wanting to sleep nurse, and I couldn't handle it, so it was just like two hours of sleep, it was just not a fun night. Um, you know, I've, I've done a lot of reading and a lot of talking with people about night terrors, but I'm always open for... Any other suggestions, any other stories, anything. I'm just so scared that Tristan's going to get into another night terror cycle. And it's just, it's terrifying. It's just, it's it's exhausting. It's heart-wrenching. It's just, I don't, I don't even know. If anybody's been there, they understand. And if you haven't, count your stars because it's just really awful. Moving on from my awful night, I had a lovely meeting with my midwife this morning. Um, she got back from Africa last week, so she got to share, share some stories with me about that. And um, it, was, it was so neat to hear from her. And I'll share more probably after she does her um, presentation with our local attachment parenting group. Um, because she's going to get her pictures and stories kind of um, all organized so that I'm really excited about that because she shared some with me but you know she does have other appointments too so we only had so long but it was just so neat to hear a couple of the stories and it's just a completely different world over there and it's just 
Amazing. Amazing. Um, we also talked about my blood work. Um, my vitamin D levels were awful. I was one point above the, the bottom recommendation level. So uh, she just recommended that, and it was too, I was not feeling too great when I got my blood drawn. And um, so she just recommended keep doing my 8,000 IU that I've been doing. And if I'm feeling sluggish or cold coming on or anything like that, bump it up to 12,000 or even more if I feel like it. So um, it, I'm glad that it wasn't like really low which I did start doing a supplement, so I'm guessing that's why it wasn't, but it's, it's nice.